ideas. May okay. the words of my mouth <laughs> yeah, uh, be, be acceptable unto you. My God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I needed that. Thank you. How do you, how do you identify yourself? How do you identify yourself? You know, that's such a simple question. Such a, such a simple question. You know, um, clearly, we just say our names. I'm Wendy. That's how I identify myself. It's simple. But is it? But is it really all that simple? Identity can be really complex if you think about it. We are one thing to our parents. And perhaps that changes over time, too. And we are a different thing to our spouses, a different person to our spouses. And, and, and when our children are very small, we are strong and we are smart. <laughs> and when our children grow to be teenagers, um, well, we're idiots. Right? And by the time they get into their 20s or 30s, we get smart again. And you know, when we, we, when we walk down the street in one neighborhood, in one neighborhood in Milwaukee, we are clearly a part of that environment. And when we walk through another, we may be perceived as, as, as other, as different, even, even as the enemy. And this is the reality of this world. It is endemic. You know, we are, we are part of our families. We're part of our work groups. We're part of our sports teams. And we identify ourselves by the people we associate with. And other people identify us the same way. We, we tend to be careful about who we associate with. I mean, I learned that in high school. My mother said, don't hang out with that crowd. So I did. <laughs> we try to find people who are like us, people that we can identify with. And, and my friends, in a tribal society, where we came from, this is normal. This is a reasonable way to act. You may remember that, that uh, Reverend Elder Nancy Wilson, the moderator of their denomination, uh, once wrote a book called Our Tribe. And this is what she was talking about. Because when someone different approaches the tribe, the tribe pulls together and prepares for war. Sometimes the visitors are peaceful and, and, and the warlike behavior is unnecessary. Um, but sometimes it is necessary. Still, still, as our population in this world has increased, we have, have become physically closer together just because of sheer numbers. And we, we've also become closer together because we do cooperative trade. And, and because of a lot of other things. We are, we've, we've created a system of communication that allows us to share what is happening in one place of, in one place with the whole world, share it with the whole world almost instantaneously. And we've had to create rules and laws and ways of acting that prevent us from letting our fear, say that again, from letting our fear fear of other people, of different people, from getting in the way. I think that was what Jesus was talking to me about when he said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you let loose of, whatever you loose on earth, will be loosed in heaven. We are bound together. We are bound together together here 
and we will be bound together there. So gosh, my friends, that means that we need to find a way to get along. We are going to be together forever. And it seems to me that we have forgotten that. You know, in the past couple of weeks, we've seen streets filled with people protesting and rioting because they perceive that they are being treated differently. And I'm not just talking about in the St. Louis area. I'm talking about all over the world. In our cities, even in Milwaukee, even in Milwaukee, we see young people die, die, And we may believe that they die in greater numbers because they happen to be of a particular race. We may not believe that, but we may. In parts of the world, we see people dying because they have a religion that is different from the majority. We see whole towns, whole towns fleeing because otherwise they will die. In our world, we see people dying because of whom they love. And yet, and yet we are bound together. We're bound together. And there are some, there are some bright spots. There are some joyful times. There was a pride parade in a country in Africa where up until recently it was illegal, illegal, punishable by death to be gay. In this world there are reconciliation commissions where people come together to make amends. Doctors are sent around the world to fight diseases. And, you know, there are so many other signs, so many other hopeful things that somehow, somehow, we can find a way to get along. To get along. We are bound together. And yet, sin is endemic. You, you, you can't get away from it. You can't get away from the fact that there are people in this world where they can't find enough to eat. Cannot get enough to eat. Cannot get enough to feed their babies. We can't get away from the fact that in this world, children, children are traded for sex. We can't get away from the fact that some people use their power to enslave other people. We cannot get away. We're stuck. We're stuck with it. And all we can do, all we can do as individuals and as community is try, work, to build a better relationship with those people who are right around us. We can, we can reach out where we can. We are not going to fix what's happening in the Middle East or in Africa. We aren't even going to be able to fix what's happening in St. Louis area. We may be able to fix what's happening in this building and right around this church. We might be able to impact that. We can work to feed the hungry. Monday nights. We can talk to those people who disagree with us. That's a radical idea, I know. We can talk to them and see if we can come to an understanding. Or at least, if we don't agree, we can agree to disagree and know better where those people are coming from and where we are coming from. And we can welcome people who have been pushed out, who have been pushed away. We can welcome them into our loving community.
community. My friends, we may be angered. We may be frustrated by the violence that's in this world. But we are bound together. We are stuck with each other. And we need to find a way to use that, to use that boundedness, to use that stickiness, to use that glue to make a little corner of the world, a little corner that, it, that might be called MMCC, a little corner, a community that reaches in to each other and reaches out to the community. Amen? Amen. Amen.